gospel reading this morning is from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the field. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Our opening hymn is All Glory, Laud, and Honor. join me in the opening prayer. With great joy, we welcome you, Lord Jesus. The journey has been long, and we have longed to enter the holy city. You come into our hearts and our lives humbly, patiently, 
to learn and grow, to embark on journeys of hope and healing. Open our hearts today to hear your words as we sing praise to you. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the Lord's name. Amen. Let us pray. May these reflections of Palm Sunday and Holy Week, the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. We try to do it, but it's impossible to capture the mood of Palm Sunday because there are so many moods. No one emotion can come close to capturing that day a day that's filled with so many moments, so many highs and so many lows. What really began as a spontaneous parade set in motion a series of events that led to Jesus's death on the cross just five days later. Before they were jeering, calling on Pontius Pilate to crucify him, these people were cheering, laying down their coats in the road to create a path for this honored guest, Jesus, as he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. They were pulling branches off the palm trees that lined the street and they're chanting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Their king has finally arrived. There was so much excitement. 
but mingled with that excitement was disappointment. And on the edge of this triumphal parade were the faces of ridicule. Political and religious leaders who were looking on with a sense of skepticism and concern as Jesus entered. They didn't wave palms and cheer, but criticized him from the margins, worried, angry that this outsider had attracted such a huge following and was creating such a stir. Today, as we celebrate Palm Sunday and look toward this difficult week, we take a look, closer look at all the faces in that crowd. What we now call Palm Sunday was the beginning of the Passover week and crowds were coming from all over to Jerusalem. The most powerful religious and political leaders were already assembled when through the East Gate, Jesus entered on a donkey, surrounded by a throng of followers. People were pulling branches off the trees and they were enthusiastically waving palms and they were greeting Jesus with cries of Hosanna, Hosanna, shouts of blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord filled the air. These people who were living under oppressive Roman rule were holding out all hope that their Messiah had come and that there would soon be an overthrow of the government and a new prosperous life for them. These are the faces of excitement. Hosanna, Hosanna, our King has come. Have you ever been that excited? Have you ever rushed to see someone in a parade or in a public appearance? Who is it that you would be willing to push your way to the front of the crowd to see? Can you imagine throwing a coat to make a carpet fit for such a grand entrance? When I see the long lines or the tent cities cropping up for concerts or a particular appearance, I think of the crowds that day and the fevered pitch that our excitement can reach. But have you ever noticed what it looks like after the crowds have dis dispersed and those tent cities empty? They often leave a lot of trash behind, but the excitement often wanes. People move on quickly. I can imagine the palm leaves and the coats that were left strewn in the streets as the parade moved on that day. Debris that may be the only reminder of how excited the people were just moments before. Some people's excitement remained at rock concert levels, but others lost interest quickly. In fact, for some, they were disappointed that Jesus seemed pointed more for peace than for war. This overthrow that they were seeking will have to wait. Maybe this isn't even the Messiah that they were expecting after all. Those are the faces of disappointment. Ones who came but didn't stay long. Ones whose enthusiasm and devotion was short-lived. And on that day that was so thrilling, we also see faces of ridicule people who didn't line the parade to cheer Jesus on, but stood along the margins leery. They didn't see Messiah. They saw a rabble rouser. They saw a troublemaker. They didn't see someone who came in the name of the Lord. In fact, they saw someone who came to displace them, the elite and political and religious leaders of the day. These are the faces of ridicule, quick to downplay, quick to criticize, ready to stop. Today, we wave our palms and we cry, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, knowing that the story didn't stop that day. It didn't even end in Jerusalem with his death. That's why it's important for us to look at all the faces that may have been in the crowd that day, to feel both the tension and the excitement. 
when we are able to see some of the conflicts and contradictions that happen in the midst of this triumphal entry, we get a better idea of who Jesus is and the pain and difficulty that happened for both those who understood who he was and those who had made him out to be a Messiah of their own making. As Jesus enters this holiest of cities, he comes with a reputation. This man heals, some would say, able to point to people who can now see, who can now walk, who can now talk. He performs miracles that even the most devout don't understand. This is a man who teaches in a way others don't, who points to God's kingdom by flipping some of the most ancient teachings. This is a man who eats with sinners. This is a man who some say is the son of David. This is a man who some call the Messiah. So with the many sides of Jesus come the many faces of Palm Sunday. The fervent cheers are ones of anticipation and hope that can't be ignored. The faces of disappointment are the real faces of those who feel let down, who don't believe that reality matches their expectation. And the faces of ridicule are our faces when we choose fear over faith and division over unity. When we speak instead of listen. When we confirm rather than discern. When we stand against instead of welcoming in. The cries of Hosanna thunder across this holy city. It's a day that will forever be known as Palm Sunday. And these, these are the faces of that day. Excitement, disappointment, and ridicule. Amen. Our next Tim is Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. Good morning and welcome to Church on the Couch on this Sunday, Palm Sunday, April 10th, 2022. It is the beginning of Holy Week and we will talk a little bit more about what all of uh, all of those things uh, that will be happening in the life of this congregation, both in person and on the couch. I'd like to introduce to you this morning, Sue Candy, who is the organist and choir director at Pennaville United Methodist Church. She's leading music today. Karen Fuller is our liturgist this morning, and Lisa Kisselstein is providing special music. You will also see Diana Gardner throughout the week. Our services uh, this week uh, in person, we have a Monday Thursday service at noon in, uh, in, the, in the fellowship hall in the church. We will have an online service at 7 o'clock p.m. Good Friday is online only, and that's at noon. I also invite you, if you feel so moved, to come and participate in the Stations of the Cross at the Baldwinsville Church from noon until 3. That's self-guided, and you can come for any time and stay for any length of time. And then uh, we'll return here for Easter on the couch next Sunday morning. 
and we have an in-person service at 11 o'clock a.m. on Sunday. I also invite you, if you want a sunrise service, to join me at Mercer Park at 6.30 in the morning on Easter Sunday morning as Baldwinsville uh, Community of Faith will celebrate the Risen Lord. Friends, there are so many things in our hearts, both joys and concerns, and I invite you with me to prepare for a time of prayer, and Lisa will bring us in to that prayer. Let us Lord God, I remember as a child watching All in the Family and snickering when Archie Bunker went to prayer and said, A Bunker here. And then I laughed again when Edith decided to pray and she said, E Bunker here. I may have snickered, but if we really think about it, prayer is that simple and it's that intimate. Child of God here. Seeking your ear, leaning in, O oh Lord, hear our prayer this day. On this festive day of Palm Sunday, as we lift our voices and we lift our branches, may our hearts lift us high. May we reach to you with it all that we have and say, Hosanna. May our faith be clear. May we follow even when it's the hardest. May we shine the light even when it's the darkest. And may we be able to be the followers that you seek us to be. Lord God, in this holy week, there are so many things going on in our lives and around the world. And we pray that you be with us in blessing. That each one who hurts, each one who celebrates, each one who seeks will know your presence in their lives. Lord God, we bring all of these prayers to you on this holy day. In the name of Jesus, praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The second gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 46. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, so could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, my father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? 
See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed in the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we hear the cheers of Palm Sunday turn to the jeers of Holy Week, we do it as Easter people. We know that the kingdom of God far outreaches any kingdom that we could create. And we know that the peace of Christ is not a peace that is guaranteed through power and oppression, but rejects power and is available to even the most oppressed. We enter this Holy Week already aware of the events that will unfold, but we are still challenged by them. Our invitation and challenge as followers of Jesus is to not turn away from these events, but to walk through them, strengthened by that knowledge. A lot happens, and it happens fast. And just like Palm Sunday, there's not just one tone or one mood that defines the week, but many faces that help us understand all that will happen this week. We're going to see faces of judgment, faces of fear, and faces of compassion. And we'll feel many emotions as we watch with a sense of bewilderment, 
excitement and sadness and hope. On Monday, any sense of jubilation that lingered was quickly snuffed out when Jesus entered that temple. He was incensed that this holy place had been desecrated. It was turned from a sacred place of prayer and sacrifice into a marketplace. Sadly, many of those whose tables were turned that day, just the day before, were throwing down their coats and waving palms and shouting Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Tension was building and the faces of judgment were beginning to appear in places where we used to see the faces of worship and adoration. Judgment that declared that Jesus was on the wrong side of both religious and political life. That what he proclaimed and what he professed and what he represented was nothing less than heresy. It's judgment that plotted, judgment that conspired, judgment that would dramatically change everything as they knew it. On Thursday, Jesus gathered in that upper room with his closest friends and his followers. This is the night when Jesus' commandment to love one another gets vivid expression in the washing of feet and in the sharing of bread and cup. It was then that a dirt-stained towel became the banner of God's kingdom, and the bread and the cup became both the symbol and the food of that kingdom. He took a towel and he wrapped it around his waist, held out a bowl of water, bent down and washed their feet, commanding for each to love one another. While they were eating, Jesus took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup and after he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, the faces of compassion shine for us, revealing that God's love is stronger, it is deeper, and it is greater than anything we could ever do on our own. And that loving one another is a way that we show our love for God. Now, long after that gathering of his closest friends, while praying in the garden, Jesus met his opposition. His disciple Judas would turn betrayer bought for 30 pieces of silver. Jesus was turned over and arrested. The faces of judgment were now clearly identifiable in the light given off by the torches that they carried. When Jesus was arrested, a few of his closest followers were with him. They had a split second to decide if they were going to stay and defend Jesus or if they were going to run. Fight or flight, as they say. They chose flight. And not only did they run, but when Peter was recognized as one who had been with Jesus, he denied it three times. The faces of discipleship and loyalty had been replaced by fear. Fear for themselves. Fear that they would be found out. Fear that they may be arrested and killed. It was the faces of fear that left Jesus alone with his captors that fateful night. Jesus would soon be tried. And even after a futile attempt is made by Pilate to spare his life, Jesus is found guilty and will be crucified the next day. Now anger and hate, once found lurking in the shadows, is out in the wide open, condemning Jesus. It's compassion, the product of this deep and abiding love that comes only from God and is modeled in Jesus Christ that seems to be hidden, pushed to the margins. 
but it's going to keep appearing throughout Holy Week, showing up in feet washing and holy meals, in a vision given to Pilate's wife, a man who carries Jesus's cross, a mother who never leaves her son, a devoted friend who weeps at the sight of a dying Jesus, a centurion whose heart and mind are changed. Those are the faces of compassion. So with the many sides of Jesus come the many faces of Palm Sunday and Holy Week. Moments of excitement, disappointment, ridicule, judgment, fear, compassion. Faces that week are our faces today. Ones that judge before we know the whole story. Ones that fear because we're afraid it'll change our lives too much. And compassion that works deep within us so that we can see neighbors in places where we once only saw foe. Where we can see love even in the hardest of circumstances. Their faces are our faces. These are the faces of Palm Sunday. Excitement, disappointment, ridicule. These are the faces of Holy Week. Judgment, fear, and compassion. We pray this prayer of confession. Loving God, we sing and we shout Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. How easy is it to ignore what is to come, the anger, the betrayal, the torture, and death. Forgive us when we move from the celebration of Palm Sunday to Easter without taking time to hear or experience the passion and depths in between. Forgive us, O oh God, for the times we have fallen short. Help us to be faithful to your gospel of love and liberation. Surround us with your enabling grace. Bless us with a community to help us live a life of faithfulness. Faithfulness to the one who came to teach us how to live and how to love. Faithfulness to the one for whom we are waving palms today. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Our God's love is steadfast. He is slow to anger, quick to love, moved to forgiveness. You and I, yes, you and I are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our closing hymn is O Sacred Head Now Wounded.
Our benediction this morning is responsive. Passing from joy into sorrow and on to elation. We come to Christ this holy week. Today is only a part of the story. Jesus' triumph leads to his death, his death to his resurrection. May the journey of this week lead you into the fullness of Christ's love. Amen.